Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Port Gibson, located in Claiborne County, Mississippi, on the 1st of May, 1863. 1863 was not going so well for the Confederates. Sometime in April, Confederate General John C. Pemberton was given the bad news by Confederate Brigadier General John S. Bowen that the Union had built up an invasion fleet of barges and were heading south. Bowen gave this news with the certainty that the Union Army outnumbered his men more than three to one. Even with his knowledge of the area, Bowen's 8,000 troops were surely no match for more than 24,000 feet sent by Grant. Bowen did feel he might have an advantage. He was sure that they would land at Rodney, but unfortunately, like many things in war, what seemed logical and may have been the actual best place to land was not where Grant landed. On April 30th, Grant landed at Bruinsburg, catching Bowen and the Confederates by surprise and given Grant the needed time to push Union General McClernand to move his men two miles inland to elevated dry ground and onto Port Gibson. There they hoped to secure the bridge across the Big Bayou Pier to the Grand Gulf, a major Confederate supply base. These supplies were essential as Grant and the Union troops had a very long and exposed supply line back to Union territory. Union forces met the Confederates, but the fighting itself was sporadic. The Confederates were out of place, so only parts of their forces were available to try and stop the Union advance. Unable to throw back Grant quickly enough, allow Grant to secure a beachhead for his barges to start building up the supplies he did have on the beach. Grant called up his cavalry to use their speed to harass the Confederates that were around. Bowen was unable to counter the Union cavalry, as Bowen's own cavalry had been ordered to chase Union Commander Grierson and his Union Raiders, who we had talked about earlier in the series. The meat of the fighting started when the Union 14th Division, under the command of Union Brigadier General Eugene A. Carr, arrived at the Schaefer House on May 1st, a little after midnight and under the cover of darkness. The Union troops began to engage the Confederates in a skirmish and cannon fire until almost 4 a.m. that morning. The Union advance, however, was slowed down as Carr and his men got lost in the undergrowth. He split his forces up with one portion moving through the cane breaks, and the 2nd Brigade moving along Widow's Creek Bottom to attack the Confederates from the flank. In a streak of luck, Carr began his attack and was unexpectedly joined by the Union's 12th Division under the command of Brigadier General Alvin P. Hovey. The combined forces cracked the Confederate lines like a walnut, breaking both ends of their line and routing the Confederate troops back to Port Gibson. McClernand is said to have stopped his men at this time to give them speeches on how well they had done while Grant came forward and told McClernand that the Confederates had simply pulled back to better defenses. Chastised by his boss, McClernand ordered his men to form up, resulting in more than 20,000 men across less than a two-mile area. Using this mass movement, they began to push forward. To the surprise of the Union, however, the Confederate Colonel Francis Cockrell slammed into the flank of the Union, causing them to hesitate and stop moving forward. They were fearing that there were more Confederate forces on their flanks. Eventually, the Union troops settled in defensive lines outside of Port Gibson for the night. Once the Union had prepared again, they moved forward on the morning of May 2nd, but found Port Gibson empty. The Confederate troops had used the Union's hesitation to pull their forces out and retreat back across Bayou Pierre, burning a bridge behind them. The Confederates knew the Union would just rebuild, but they were just trying to buy more time. The Union suffered 131 killed, 714 wounded, and 25 missing, Meanwhile, the day had cost the Confederate forces 68 dead, 354 wounded, and 360 missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.